Now, it's clear that the word God in the New Testament almost invariably refers to the Father. 1,300 times at least, the Greek orthéos, the word for God in Greek, uh, refers unquestionably to the Father. We can see that from the context because uh, the Father is distinct from Jesus. Um, we have in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 6, there is one God, the Father. We have the phrase, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Clearly then, God is being distinguished from Christ. We have the famous creedal statement of Jesus in John 17, 3, where he says, this is the essence of eternal life. This is what life in the coming age of the kingdom is all about, that they should know you, Father, as the only one who is true God. Augustine was troubled by that verse in John 17, 3. Because it didn't sound Trinitarian at all. By that, of course, by that time, by the time of Augustine, the Trinity was in full swing, and it really didn't sound Trinitarian enough because the one God was being described as the only true God, the Father. And Jesus was being set alongside that one true God, but not included within the Godhead. So Augustine was constrained, uh, and I'm not sure this was a wise move on his part because he wound up really manipulating the scripture here, he said that it should read that they believe in you, Father, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent as the one true God. Now that sounds at least like two parts of the Trinity, or two members of the triune God, but that's a complete fabrication, should I say forgery, really, because it alters the meaning of that scripture. And that for Jesus was a critically important monotheistic statement about the Father being the only one who is true God. Uh, John 20:28 20, is sometimes cited as proof that Jesus is God. That's the situation where Thomas, who was earlier, and this is very important, uh, in chapter 14, doubting And in verse 28 of chapter 20, finally Thomas looks at Jesus and says, My Lord and my God. It's not actually evocative in the normal sense, Oh my Lord, oh my God, but it's a nominative case, functioning, we might say, as evocative. So it's an address to Jesus, clearly. Now is that really a reference to Jesus as God? I doubt that very much. First of all, the phrase, My Lord and my God, is not the way you address God in the Old Testament. When you address God, or you speak of God, you talk about the Lord my God, the Lord my God, the Lord your God, the Lord his God, but not my Lord and my God. In fact, my Lord in the New Testament is invariably not an address to God, but to my Lord, the Messiah, just as we found in Psalm 110, 1, incidentally. Elizabeth, for example, says, what a joy it is that the mother of my Lord has come to visit me, not the mother of my God. That would be impossible. The mother of my Lord Messiah, again reference to Psalm 110.1. And Mary Magdalene, when she's distraught in the garden, she says, they've taken away my Lord. And where have they put him? I don't know where they've taken my Lord to. That's a reference to Messiah, not my God. And so when Thomas addresses Jesus and says, my Lord, that first title is certainly a messianic title. It's not a title for God, much less for my Yahweh. Nobody says my Yahweh. But it's my Lord, the Messiah. He follows that with a separate title, really, because the article is repeated, My Lord and My God. Not My Lord and God, but My Lord and My God. And that second reference is invariably, in the New Testament, a reference to God the Father. Now this makes perfect sense, because the problem, if that is a problem, in John 20, is that Thomas had failed to recognize who Jesus really was. And in the earlier episode, in chapter 14, we find that Jesus is insisting to Thomas and to Philip the fact that if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. That, of course, doesn't mean that Jesus is God, but that God is working in Jesus. Paul put it this way, he said, God was in Christ. But that's what, what Thomas and Philip failed to understand. So the natural sequel and resolution of that problem in chapter 14 occurs in the 20th chapter. And if indeed we've seen Jesus, we have seen God, Jesus being the perfect image and agent of God.